Thank you. Um, thank you for having me here today. It's actually really great uh, to be back surrounded by Al people from Alberta agriculture and I've seen some really friendly faces that uh, were a part of getting my business started, which was 10 years ago. Um, I know last speaker of the day is always a little bit difficult, so I'm going to try to keep you entertained <laughs> with my story. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how innovation has really been the key to our success and continues to be uh, to this day. As I, you know, as I mentioned, 10 years ago, I started Baby Gourmet, founded it, um, truthfully was inspired by a grocery food aisle, from the baby food aisle. And it sounds very cliche that you get this idea and this, this big idea at one moment, but it was that time where my daughter was six months old, I was uh, looking for something in the baby aisle, something I could feed her that I would feel good about, and really all that I saw was the same picture, just jar after jar of food that didn't look very appealing, wasn't anything I would eat myself, and I really in good, in good conscience could not feed to my baby. And I thought at that moment, I think I can do something about it. There's an opportunity here. I've always known, even when I was a kid, I was an entrepreneur, and I wanted to have a business. And I had so many crazy ideas, but nothing really ever st stuck. And I always told myself, when I had that idea, I'm going to do it 150%. And it really, at that moment, I knew, this is the idea. I'm going to give it 150%. And I've done that. I knew that I had a great idea, but like a lot of people with great ideas, you have no idea what to do with it or how to do something with it. And the first thing I thought was, OK, I think I've got a great idea. I really need to see if everyone else thinks I do as well. And the best place for me at the time to do that was at the Calgary Farmers Market. I was a, a new mom. I shopped there frequently. I bought my groceries there. And I knew that there was a lot of other new moms there. So if I was going to make food, that would be the place I wanted to sell it at. And I enlisted my sister to help me. And the two of us rented a commercial kitchen in a, in a community center and started making food, buying all the ingredients from the farmer's market and selling it on the weekends. It really didn't take a lot of time to see that there was a need for this. Um, our business grew through word of mouth week after week. We kept gradually expanding to a new freezer, to a bigger freezer, to a new commercial kitchen, until really the you know two years had we kind of hit the two year mark, which was a lot longer than I anticipated. The farmers market was really supposed to just be research, and I kind of got caught up in it, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs do. You get caught up working in your business and not necessarily on it and how you're going to grow it big. My vision from the very beginning was that big hairy dream, which is I want to be a part of changing the way parents feed their, their children. And every baby deserves to eat great food and every parent deserves to feel good about it. And I wanted to be a part of that. But I wasn't going to achieve that just selling out of the farmer's market. I needed to take it big. But I, again, had no idea how to, how to take that leap and that next step. When we had hit the two-year two mark, um, at this point, uh, my daughter now uh, was just, uh, just over two years old. I had a son that was literally strapped to my body while I worked in the kitchen to make this food. It really was a labor of love. I was done with the farmer's market, and I was ready to take my dream to the next level. And you know, it was actually Janet Henderson, who is in the room today, which I was very pleasantly surprised to see, was the one that opened the door for me. At the time, she was working for Alberta Food Processors Association. And she had a young child was, when, was buying Baby Gourmet and said, you know, have you ever heard of, of Alberta Food Processors? They can really help guide you on how to take your product to the next level. And that's when I knew that I needed to start really researching and understanding what are the best ways to do this. We discontinued at the farmer's market with great sales. I think we were selling around 30000 a month, which was a great number out of a market, and I knew it was something that I could get financers behind. And I started digging into how do I take it to the next level. If my dream is this big, which is Walmart, Wal Walmart I say was the first one because in my opinion, if I wanted to feed every baby, why not go to the largest retailer in the world? And that was a good, a good start for me. But again, many, against the advice of many people, um, I went ahead and, and that's what I was targeting towards. Many people thought, start with your low-hanging fruit. Start with your small independence. Um, don't, go to the, don't start at the top. 
but I knew I had a great idea. And if I didn't start at the top, someone else was, and I was gonna miss that opportunity. I knew I had innovation and I had to, I had to, to run with it. So with the help of Alberta Food Processors and the Food Processing Center in Leduc was actually my next stop where I worked with a team of food scientists there to teach my sister and I how to scale up and how to scale our recipes. At the time, we were a frozen product, and we froze in ice cube trays, popped them out, sold them in little bags. But for me, you know, when I started digging into the market and how I was going to take my product to market, a frozen ice cube wasn't the best way. As much as I felt it had great quality, great nutrition, great texture, um, in order to bring your food to the freezer aisle, I was changing mom's buying habits from the baby food aisle to the freezer, which was a huge endeavor, which I didn't have the money to do, as well as all the logistical nightmares of, of dealing with frozen and with such a niche market. I started really digging on what could be, what is the best way to bring this product to market? And that's what led me to finding the research behind a flexible pouch. Now, when you look at the baby food aisle, everything, as I said, was jars. And now I had found a format of packaging that was complete innovation. It was a flexible pouch with a resealable cap, which allows mom to squeeze on a spoon and serve her baby, or as baby gets a little bit older, she can eat, they can eat directly from the pouch, which no one had done at this time. So now I, my concept was we've got a food that actually tastes great, and we're using the highest quality ingredients, and we've got this ultimate and convenience packaging, this is something that is really gonna change, to be a game changer in the category. As soon as I pulled that package together and got in front of investors and essentially built out um, the infrastructure that we needed internally to sustain the kind of growth we were gonna get from if my goal was going to Walmart, um, the largest retailers, we started to pull this package together. And between our sales team, our management team that we had put together at the time to raise our capital, our first pitch came in 2010 to Walmart. And getting in front of a Walmart buyer in the baby food, aisle, in the baby food section was, that necessarily wasn't the challenge was getting in front of him, it was how do I get this man to buy into the fact that uh, to buy our baby food. And he, he, again, baby food has always had that stigma that it doesn't taste good, that is, no one wants to try it. It has an, a stigma to it. So how do I change, not just mom, but how do I change a buyer to believe that we've got a product that they can actually buy and that mom is going to go specifically to, to their store to purchase? And after I convinced him that you've got to just try this product, he leaned forward and gave it a try and right away changed his complete disposition and said, I'm so glad that you came prepared today. This is gonna revolutionize the baby food aisle and this is what I'm gonna do for you. And we got a contract on our first meeting with Walmart. A lot of people say, what, what do you think was it that Walmart or that these large retail, what was it about your product? And the reality was it was the innovation behind it. It was something, you know, you're looking at a baby food aisle that had not been changed in 50 years. I think the most recent innovation in baby food had been that organ the introduction of organic, but nothing had changed in quality, format, packaging, even marketing um, was very generic. And when you looked at all of our competitors, what they were doing, um, again, I was criticized for why would you go up against Gerber and Heinz? What makes you think that you can compete against these, these big players? And I said, I think the big players are missing the mark. I don't think they truly understand the consumer. No one has addressed taste and texture. No one has addressed packaging. And I feel that there's an opportunity to really market mother to mother, mom to mom. I'm a mom and I know what they want. I've dealt directly with them for the last two years. And I believe this is a product that they would be willing to pay for. Not to mention the, the retailers are actually going to get margin. I don't think retailers have seen margin on baby food for 50 years. I think, you know, they're selling baby food at 50 cents a jar. I don't imagine anyone's making any money there. 
So this was an opportunity for everyone to make some money, mom and dad to be happy about what they're buying and feel good about feeding their baby. And to this day, you know, one of the real advantages to our product is my sister and I still develop every product. We develop every recipe that goes to market. And again, that goes back to not only our marketing that we really believe in the mom to mom aspect, but the, the reality that we believe, we still believe that the product should be as we were feeding it to our own kids. And when we develop our recipes, our babies, which are now, mine are eight and 10, and my sister's got four from the range of six to 16, they still taste everything and are a part of the whole process. We have evolved that as time has gone and as we've rolled out across Canada, we've had great success in our, in our baby food products. We've expanded into uh, baby cereals, into uh, snacks, and how we really focus and how we really look at, especially with innovation in our products, is packaging is one, but also looking at our ingredients is key, the ingredients that we use. Jill and I still source the ingredients. We taste every ingredient before it goes to production. We want to ensure that our products have no additives, unnecessary stabilizers, no sugars. Um, all of our snacks are made from pure fruits and veggies freeze-dried. Freeze we don't feel we need to add anything else to it. Our cereals have no added dairy or preservatives added to it. It's all in how it's packaged. Uh, with our nitrogen flush. And we've, you know, the great thing about evolution and continuing innovation is that we've built the company based on how our kids have aged. And with our kids growing up, we now are in an area where I'm not feeding babies anymore, I'm feeding school age kids. So we have transitioned what we learned in baby into healthy kids snacking. And with this product, you know, with Baby, we looked at Canada, and that was our initial launch. That was where we came from. That's where all of our contacts were, our resources. We felt it was the most natural for us to expand into Baby. However, the challenge with that, with that was as soon as we recognized we were in a place to take it into the United States, we were fifth or sixth to market, and we had lost that edge. But we thought we would do things a little bit differently with our kids' snacking line, and we have evolved into the fruit cup aisle, so out of baby, and instead of just, just offering the basic applesauce, we now offer very unique combinations. Um, we have one that is um, pomegranate, grape, coconut, with seven grams of protein, whey protein, and we've managed to make it taste amazing without added sugars. So we've really evolved in our product lines and how we reach our market and how we reach our consumer. and. Selecting the different markets between Canada and the U.S. has been um, has been challenging to get through. However, you know, in the end, I feel that because we offered a new a new approach in flavor, in packaging, uh, in taste, we've been able to really reach our consumer. Anyhow, that was, I, I was very mindful of time because I'm used to having a little bit more time and how to cram everything into a few minutes was difficult. But if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer. Yeah.